Are you looking to get your Mr. Heater up to par and actually move that hot air out? Well, we might have something good for you. What's up everybody and welcome back to Outdoor Gear. My name is Aaron Bottoms and today's video is sponsored by SignStack and they make a certain kind of product that we want to use on our Mr. Heater. We appreciate SignStack sponsoring this video but they also gave us authorization to do what we do and what we love to do and that's actually put this product to the test. So we're not going to hold back on this bad boy and we're going to show you what it's truly made of. Like I said this thing goes with the Mr. Heater and they make it also for a stove oven or wood burning stove fan essentially. You stick it on top and it blows that hot air out and it actually fills the room with hot air instead of it just going straight up and you will see what we I mean when we get into it. So let's dig into this product and see what it's made of. Like I said, this video is sponsored by ScienceTech. This is their four blade stove fan, but it also comes with an attachment, which we'll show you in here for your Mr. Heater unit. So if we open up the box here and we'll see what we've got going on. Oops, let me out. There we go. We've got our fan itself here. Nothing too crazy, just a little little stove fan that you stick right on top of your unit. Hopefully it will do the trick for us. Hopefully it'll push that hot air out. Um, right off the bat, these, these blades seem like a little bit thinner of a material, so I, I can already, uh, bend them one way or the other. So that's something that, again, you're going to put this somewhere and hopefully it stays in place. But if we put it on our Mr. Heater unit and we're going hunting, we're going camping, somebody kicks it, these blades, uh, they bend very, very easily. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe we want something that's a little bit more sturdy. Uh, and maybe we'll compare this guy to a couple other types out there, but again, side stack sent us this unit to test out and see what it's made of and see how it holds up to our test. So also in the box here, you've got your little contraption that actually hooks onto your Mr. Heater unit, and I'll show you how that works. But just a little guy right there, made of kind of a thinner pot metal, it seems like. Um, again, something that if you don't take care of it, it'll probably break a piece off, or if you bend it, it'll, it'll probably break fairly easily. Uh, these guys only run for about 40 bucks, so they're not made out of the best materials because you got to save costs and you need to be lightweight for this blade to spin. I don't know the whole ergonomics of it or I don't know the whole, the whole design is. It seems like there's a little bit of a, a sensor in here on the back if you can see right in here a couple wires. So we'll see how that does. It says the operating temperature runs anywhere from 140 to 653 degrees Fahrenheit says it right there on the box for you. Fuel savings up to 14%. Uh, equipped with durable Japanese uh, electrical machinery. Japanese seem to make pretty good stuff sometimes, so we'll see how it works out. And then no electricity needed. Great, wonderful, because we don't ever need electricity when we're out doing our stuff. Safety warnings. Don't touch it. Fairly simple. It also comes with your little bit of directions here on how to attach it to your Mr. Heater unit, which we will follow and I will demonstrate on how that works. So let's get into our actual Mr. Heater here. Seems like a fairly straightforward unit. You've seen this guy before. We've put it in uh, our other Mr. Heater video. So go check that out to see how this bad boy holds up to the other tests we like to do. I'll lay it down here so you can see what we're working with. It's got these two little bending tabs here. You place it like so. Pull it through. And those kind of hook into place. And that guy sits like that. But it's supposed to be sitting up. So I'll show you in this angle as well. You've got these little tabs here that go down underneath, pull it back through, and they kind of hook in place. And then you've got this piece here that just holds it up and actually may go down. Maybe not. Maybe it goes another further one down to get it actually flat because it is sitting at an angle. There we go. So we'll kind of, it's supposed to be flat. So it kind of looks like that. Uh, and this guy here just kind of slides into place. Um, right off the bat, it's a little, it's a little wiggly, um, but it's, it holds itself up right here. And, uh, maybe if we go down another notch, it might get better. So I'm trying to figure out the best place for it so that it's perfectly flat, but it also rests up against the unit here. I don't know if that's supposed to go. There we go. Ah, maybe it's going to go like that. So about, I don't know, one, two, three, three bars down is where that little hook goes into place. You slide that guy there, and it's wiggly, but it's it's sitting up there. So 
let's go ahead and cut our unit on and see how long it takes for this fan to get going. And I'm gonna start a little timer here. Where'd my phone go? So if there's a time lapse, you know why. So we're starting it. And we've got it set on high. So we'll check back in when this thing actually starts moving. All right, so we're about 45 seconds in, uh, probably a little bit close to a minute, and it's it's going. And it's definitely pushing some hot air out, which is pretty cool. This is going to push your, your hot air out instead of it going straight up and going to the ceiling and everything like that. It's going to actually warm the room out by pushing it out. We'll see how, how well it does, but it's definitely, it's definitely spinning. So that's cool. And you can definitely feel it out here, moving that warm air out. So cool. Neat little accessory if you're going camping and you need to uh, push that warm air out more. Maybe push it towards yourself if you're sitting around a fire or something, but... It's definitely getting its little spin on. Not much to it. It's there. It's working. It's doing its thing. Not much I have to say about that. Now, I'm going to wiggle this bad boy around because we're going to be in a boat when I'm using this, more than likely. So, we're going to get some waves. We're going to get some motion. So, that's what I was worried about. It's still spinning. You're supposed to hold it by this handle when it gets hot because even this handle is a little warm. But, look at the thing go. So, essentially, what you're looking at is the heater warms up this metal here and once this metal gets nice and warm it actually creates the motion i don't know it's something electronic in there that gets it going but it's the heat creating the energy and moving the fan blade because as you can see it's away from the unit but it's still spinning it's still doing its thing i'll put it down here for you so you can see it going completely away from the unit unit's back behind me now and it's still spinning. So once it gets up to temperature, it's still going to spin. Uh, obviously, it's not going to move the hot air at that point. It's just the unit itself. So there's no warm air actually going off of this. It's just the fan now. But that's something to keep in mind. If you're going to uh, attach it to your Mr. Buddy unit, go ahead and take some wire, something that's not going to burn up, and tie it on there. Obviously, a zip tie is going to melt. Um, but you can get some thin wire and just wrap it around there, cut off the end so it's nice and safe. But... If it falls out, all you got to do is slide it right back into place. This guy here is uh, out of place now, so we're going to kind of get this back in place without touching this hot metal. Then we'll take our fan, slide it right back on top, and uh, let her roll. Cool. Side stack stove fan it works it's moving it's doing its job well once this guy cools down we're gonna do a couple more tests on it and uh see what it's actually made of so we'll cut this bad boy off here and uh we'll hopefully this will cool down and uh stop stop moving all right so as i was uh working on a different project i wanted the fan to actually stop spinning so i stuck it in the freezer now it's been in there for about an hour so let's take it out of the freezer go outside where it's a little bit windy and see what it does when we turn the heat on Ah, she's uh, nice and frosty now. All right, so got it outside here. We're going to take our fan, slide it back on top. And uh, I've got it sitting away from me just a couple feet here to see if it will, in fact, blow warm air towards me. We'll start our timer and see how long it takes for this fan to warm up from a freezing temperature, because it was in the freezer, obviously, and uh, see how long it goes. So we'll see you in whenever it starts spinning. All right, so it's just started spinning here, and it's been about a minute, so cool. Even from a freezing temperature, if you let it sit outside all night long, attached to your Mr. Heater sitting in the boat or wherever it may be, it's still going to spin. And I can definitely tell, with and without, when it was just heating up by itself, I can get a little bit of warmth here. But now that the fan is going, I can definitely feel it pushing towards me, which is pretty cool. And you'll get that with a lot of other fans, and again... We'll test other fans as we go along and whatnot, but we wanted to try out the Steck stovetop fan here, the four blade, to see how it holds up and what it's really made of. So it, it does work, freaking temperature, great. If I'm gonna drop this or, you know, hits the rocks and whatnot, you can see that blade is bent all the way back now. Again, I can take it and I can bend it back in place, but eventually those blades are gonna break off if they keep having that issue. If you're just going off of their little stand here it's really nice how easily it goes into place however it will fall off it's not very 
sturdy. Again, you take a piece of wire and you wrap it through the actual uh, fan itself and or drill a hole on each side and wrap it around those and then wrap your actual stand for your Mr. Heater with some wire it'll stay in place. Otherwise, it's gonna fall off and rattle. All right, so before we wrap this video up, I just wanna take a moment to show you some ways you can modify this to actually work a little bit better. Um, if you find yourself a short piece of rope with a hook on it or even a bungee cord of some kind, you simply, as you notice, this is a little wobbly, you take your piece of rope or your bungee cord and you can hook it up to the handle up here, as you can see that guy there and you just wrap your, uh, your bungee cord, hook that in place, or you wrap it like I'm doing right now. I've got a little loop. I'll feed this piece through and let that tighten up. And then on the back side here, I'll lift this up for you. It's got the, you know, the panels back here. And we can just pull that tight and that's gonna keep our fan from wobbling. So now it's in place and it's set in stone and I'm not gonna worry about it moving too much now. That's a lot more secure. Just a quick modification in case you are putting on one of these Mr. Heater units and you would like it to stay a little bit more in place. This was, uh, you can find these on the reviews they had, uh, but also it's just a quick and easy method to keep it on there. You can also, like I said, take some wire and wrap it around the bottom here and wrap it through the grate, but this is a very quick and easy way to do so. And again, that heat's gonna rise up, but it's not gonna melt your rope or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Obviously a metal piece right here would be preferred, but this piece right here does not conduct heat as much as the rest of the unit. So let that bad boy heat up. As you can see, it's already trying to spin a little bit. And the fan blades themselves, we did a little bit more research as well and noticed that the aluminum heats up a lot quicker than some other metals. And it is again, a lot lighter. So although you lose some of the, uh, maybe some of the durability and the strength of the metal, since it is aluminum, you are gonna have a little bit more forgiveness when it does bend and you can bend it right back in place, but it also conducts heat very well. And so it spins a lot easier and yada, yada, yada. You get what I'm saying. The biggest point was keeping this bad boy in place so it's not rocking around. All right, so as you can see, it is moving. So I wanted to give these little quick snip bits of what you could do to it to make it a little bit better and make it not rock back and forth and also explain a bit more about the fan blades here because they are kind of a, a thinner metal, but there is a reasoning behind it. So, move this guy over here as it blows the hot air another direction. Thank you to everybody that is watching and is watching and is subscribing and all that stuff. We always enjoy hearing from you and figuring out what you would like to see next. So please keep on doing that and keep on commenting so we know what you like, what you don't like, and maybe you can give us some tips and tricks on things that you've experienced with a fan blade of this kind. Maybe suggest a different one, whatever it may be. Thank you to my editor, Sandy. He is doing an amazing job. We appreciate everything he does and kind of condensing all my jibber jabber, which I do a lot, if you haven't noticed. It is what it is. I have a good time. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and we will see you on the next one. See ya.